This is the Business Experience Show, where we connect those who want to know more about digital marketing, social media, and business strategy with entrepreneurs who are succeeding in today's marketplace. Follow our blog, join our online network, or connect with us at thebusinessexperienceshow.com. And now, your host, Lisa Caprelli. Joining us in studio is Michelle Waters. She's co-author of this wonderful book called The Orange Line. Thank you, Lisa. I'm very honored. Let's give our audience some background. You're from Australia, first of all. Oh, I'm from Australia, yes. I came over to America eight years ago now and uh, to live here I took up a job as a VP for a a large company that had the biggest footprint of childcare in the US and I also um, had met somebody so that was another incentive to come over here and uh, before that my career had been really uh, determined by this work Mm -hmm. life family fit and strategies are developed and won awards for in uh, in Australia. So when you moved to the United States you hadn't even had a thought of the book yet? Oh no. Okay. No, no, no. That was not on my agenda. I had no idea I was going to write a book. So it really sounds like the you and your co-authors the backgrounds you have are diverse but but very um, very strong areas of expertise. Yes, but also mothers trying to make work and life and family fit and uh, my co-authors both struggled when their children Mm. were young Mm -hmm. they found it difficult giving up their career that's what they decided Mm -hmm. they had to do because one of them their husband traveled um, another one um, had a special needs child and they couldn't work out how to do both I decided, um, because I love small children, it was really appropriate for me to set up a business that oh. was was something that I could be near my children. So I loved that stage of my life and then parlayed into the corporate life after nine years. I was close to 40 when I did that, whereas they weren't enjoying their time at home and couldn't work out for a number of years how to get back in. They did, but that delay, of course, jeopardises a, per- a woman's finances, that jeopardises their their um, re-entry. So, you know, w- we heard these stories. We wanted to know how are women doing it, having it all, but how could they do have it all but not do it all? And the book is called The Orange Line and uh, A Woman's Guide to Integrating Career, Family and Life. But um, there are a couple lines that you use in the terminology. So let's start with the green line. Well, the green line is a career-centric focus. Um, So your career is all about work, and then other things take a a secondary priority for you. In your life. In your life. So it might be your art or, you you know, any other hobbies. You might sacrifice your hobbies. The doctor that... um, that I go to when I told her about the book she was very sad because she decided she couldn't be a doctor a wife and have children Mm. so she chose not to have children Mm. so that sort of career centric focus often means someone else is supporting you and they're minimalizing their career and so people who then leave that path sometimes they make a swing a complete swing in the other direction they go the other extreme and we call that the red line and that's where they do opt out um, for a certain amount of time and that's more like the woman I just talked about that you know opted out now getting back in is really hard and they bounce around they never get the power influence um, they never develop all those other parts of themselves you know which may be you know in terms of um, a career something that they can contribute an offer uh, yeah so it's a, it's about a middle line and that's where you can have your career it may um, be it may ramp up or, or ramp down for a period of time mm-hmm. but you you're staying on a, a trajectory that is on track in the sense you are doing something that you really love you might want to you know step out and and um, 
stay with the children for a bit or you may want to uh, volunteer overseas you're broadening your skills but even if you're at home there's some volunteer work thing you can get on a committee and you're still developing other skills so it's about saying okay this is what I love this is what I want to do this is how I'm going to maintain that but um, it's much more a paced and building muscle over time approach that isn't going to lead to burnout and it's where both people in a relationship can both have a career. I'll give you an example. Um, one woman who's an aeronautical engineer that we interviewed, her husband also is an engineer, decided that um, while the children are young she's way back, uh, she's actually uh, orbiting satellites around the globe at the moment, so she's full on, she's still breastfeeding I might add, but it, it, you know it, it, it's a very sort of taxing, tiring time, sure. but she wants to take the time off when her children are in adolescence so he's more supportive at this point, his career mm. isn't progressing at the same rate he'd like, but they're going to switch and there was many examples of what we call the, the orange line um, uh, a group of women who were doing Doing this kind of middle um, approach, but having it all, but not doing it all. And what did they have that the others who don't have that have? I think they had a very strong sense of self-worth. I think they had a strong sense of what their talents were and what they loved doing. And I know for myself, when I had a bout of cancer, people say, oh, she's crazy, she's so driven. I loved work. I loved the project I was on. It would be much more psychologically damaging for me to stay away from work rather than manage right. my treatment and work. So it's about knowing who you are. For me, it was identifying myself with other mothers who did have the ambition to work because I like to see into the future. Our children are going to go to school and see beyond that. One day they're going to graduate and they leave you. Yes. And I, I'm the type that I wanted to, you know, as a parent, as a mother for me, getting your child for the world is, is, is a loving thing to do. It's such great modelling too for, for the child to see that you're happy. I'll give you another example. Uh, you know, a mother going back to work after maternity leave and the three-year-old says to the mother, because she notices she's getting dressed differently, uh, where are you going, mummy? Right. Oh, uh, I'm going to work today. The baby's going into childcare where you still go mm -hmm. and I'm going back to work. And she, the three-year-old says, aren't you going to be my mummy anymore? Aww. Now this is on your first day back at work. Yeah. The reframe is, I love you, I'm always going to be your mummy. You go off to childcare and you love that. I go after work and I love that mm -hmm. and tonight we're going to talk about what we both did and right. what we both love. Right. So instead of going down back with the guilt because what you're saying Lisa mm -hmm. is you're doing what you love. Oh yeah, no question. Our children <laughs> love to see us doing right. what we love. Mm -hmm. There's some research by Ellen Galinsky who's the president of the Work Family Institute in New York and they asked the children at seven about their mum and dad working. What do you think? And the children came back with we don't mind mum and dad working. We don't like them to come home basically stressed, meaning, you know, um, without time for us. That was the problem. We like mummy and daddy working because they could see the benefits. They, children love their parents being happy. Children get really concerned when their t parents are distressed. They right. feel it they feel it's something to do with them. Mm -hmm. So they're the kind of, this is the reframe right. and, and not living up to everyone else's expectations. Right. You've got a drive and a passion for what you want to do, you should do it. If it is being a stay at, mom, at home mum, let those mums do that. If it's something else you have, right. you must do it. Good advice. You know, you, life is tricky, life is messy, life is hard. It is the way you cope with those challenges and not see them as l things are happening to me, blaming everybody else. Yes, the employer doesn't give me this, whatever. You go to a different employer, negotiate what you need. I've always found with my employment, if I say and I'm fair and I give back, the women that were doing this well would say, look, I've got to, you know, or I've got to go and pick up my son early and there's somebody sick, or blah, blah, blah. I'll jump online for it a bit later on and make sure I'm up to date with my emails. Employers are fine. Great. You know, they're human too.
It's all a negotiation. I always believe men and women are totally complementary. We should be able to to work together. You know, I need you like you need me. Right. And we're just different. And so we need each other to collaborate and, and bring together strength. And I found this through actually through one of the Amazon reviews of, of the book, where it's not just working women. There's a woman who's retired, and she really enjoyed helping her understand sort of the dynamics that had taken place and the choices she had made. Yes, um, yeah, I think it, it resonates with a lot of women because they they every, on almost every page they can say, oh, I could have responded that way, or I should I should have you know done it this way. But the other thing is. Women are working a lot longer these days because, you know, A, that we're living longer and B, we don't often have the finances to sustain ourselves. So there's a lot of women we met that are in transition for a whole new career. Mm -hmm. So they're starting again and they can read this book because the book's um, segregated into stages of a woman's life. So it doesn't stop. Well, this is great. I think this is a must read for many women, um, especially family, uh, integrating career, family and life. The Orange Line. Thank you for being Thank with you. us. Thank you for watching the Business Experience Show. Thank you to both of you. Mm -hmm.